speaker of the session and he will be talking on the similar subject Mr. Masood Rahman Khattar is lecturer at the International Islamic University and a visiting fellow at SASI. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, respected guests, excellencies, and my dear colleagues. Thank you very much for your presence. Uh, my topic of presentation uh, is about Indian Ministries uh, modernization plans and uh, Indian Ministries school start out time. So I'm going to link Indian Ministries uh, modernization plan with the personalization of code start out time. Uh, my presentation is divided uh, in three parts. First part, uh, we'll discuss about the concept the idea of Gold Star Doctrine briefly, although we have already discussed, but briefly we'll discuss about the Gold Star Doctrine, uh, that uh, what are the components required for Gold Star Doctrine to operationalize. The second part, uh, we'll focus on the Indian military's plans, or you can say that, uh, the, their military exercises in the last 10 years to operationalize this doctrine which type of components, which type of uh, weapon and equipment they have introduced in the last 10 years, uh, we are going to discuss that. And last part, we'll focus on Indian military's modernization. Then, uh, which, uh, which type of weapons and equipment they are adding, which type of force multiplier they are adding to uh, optionalize this particular doctrine. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, already we have uh, discussed that India and Pakistan border uh, is the heavily militarized border in the world. And uh, this is the reason that it is, there is a threat of uh, failure of nuclear deterrence. As you can see uh, in this slide, it's a fictitious, uh, you can say, picture in which we can assume, uh, you can see that the border between India and Pakistan uh, is heavily militarized. The next slide will tell you in reality the deployment of Pakistani forces close to the border and Indian next next and Indian deployment close to the border. Next. Now if we analyze both these deployments, we can say yes, it's true that India in this border between uh, India and Pakistan is really the most dangerous uh, forest border in the world and a threat to the nuclear deterrence in South Asia. Uh, let's quickly uh, come to the uh, components of Code Star Doctrine. We have, we are already uh, aware of that that the Indian military introduced this doctrine in 2004 in the backdrop of 2001 and 2002 uh, attacks on Indian Parliament. Uh, what was the purpose? Uh, the purpose was to give Pakistan a punishing reply and um, to to achieve, uh, you can say, conventional uh, superiority against Pakistan. Uh, let's quickly look at these components. Without these components, uh, India cannot operationalize its old start doctrine against Pakistan. India has to fulfill these requirements. First of all, uh, India must have synergy and integration among its armed forces. Along with that, India must acquire mechanized forces. Uh, India must have massive air support, latest jet fighters, uh, plus pivot force. We'll discuss pivot force in the next slide. Uh, aims under this doctrine will be limited. Uh, so there is no intention to go and capture Lahore or Sialkot. Aims would be limited. Just hit and uh, capture some area. The time frame is uh, which different analysts have uh, already discussed uh, is about 72 to 96 hours of action. And these operations would be quick and swift, uh, supported with the uh, robust command and control system network center warfare capabilities and electronic warfare capabilities to achieve an uh, element of surprise against Pakistan. So all these uh, capabilities are required. Only then India can effectively optionalize its close or doctrine against Pakistan. And uh, any missing link uh, would be no use. Uh, you, might, you might have got this uh, particular uh, map 
is which we have just indicated. In 2010, we finalized this document, and we indicated these areas, thrust areas, based on uh, historical incursions and the modern uh, current deployment of the Indian forces and the, uh, the geographical, you can say, uh, location tells us, uh, or you can say, we analyzed that these might be the first areas in Punjab and um, Sindh or Rajasthan sector to penetrate into Pakistan. And these areas are significant. And in coming slides, uh, we will also analyze that in these areas, most of these areas, uh, later on, Indian military carried out many military uh, exercises. Uh, in this slide, uh, although this is not the updated one, because of short time we could not update it, but uh, these are the main areas in Punjab sector and in the Rajasthan sector where India carried out most of its exercises. Uh, let's quickly analyze that uh, about the military exercises. Uh, in 2004 and 5, India carried out three major exercises. Exercise Deviastra, Gata Shakti and Desert Strike. Uh, in 2004, uh, India introduced LORO's uh, in one of their exercises. This is long-range reconnaissance and observation system. It is very important for surveillance and reconnaissance on land. Uh, it would definitely uh, give India an edge against Pakistan in surveillance capabilities. The second uh, important thing was pivot cores. Uh, pivot cores uh, are basically uh, the holding cores having offensive punch. So according to Indian uh, commanders, uh, in 2005, India uh, carried out uh, another an exercise, Vajra Shakti, in which they introduced pivot cores. Uh, uh, so according to them, this particular core deployed, would be deployed close to the border with Pakistan, and it would have offensive and defensive punch. So in case of any urgency, they can carry out uh, attacks against Pakistan. The second important element in this particular exercise was introduced was Force Multiplication Command Post. Uh, force Multiplication Command Post, uh, you can say, is uh, 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 integrating the information flow from air assets, from land assets, the radars, airwalks, radars, uh, the satellites, they are connected with the field commander. So it was also practiced as part of their network-centric warfare capabilities. Uh, another exercise is, uh, in 2005, Desert Strike. Uh, utilize their mechanized forces, their UAV sensors, radars, etc. Uh, from 2006 and 7, India carried out uh, three major exercises: uh, Sangi Shakti, Ashwamed, and Shatrunash. In these exercises, Indian military uh, practiced uh, their mobility through AN-32 aircrafts, IL-76 logistics supply, uh, the operations in, in uh, day and night. Quick and swift operations were practiced in these exercises in these years. Plus, Indian Air Force uh, practiced synergy and integration with the ground forces. And along with that, India also uh, practiced uh, their forces under nuclear biological chemical warfare, you can say, a type of, uh, they claimed that they practiced under such an environment. So overall, uh, these, uh, you can say, the era from 2006 and 7 was also significant uh, for the Indian military. From 2008 and uh, 9, there were three, uh, two major exercises, Brazil Chariots in 2008 and uh, Hinz Shakti in 2009. In 2008, uh, Indian uh, Brazil Chariots, some 37,000 Indian uh, forces participated in this particular exercise. and. Uh, the important part of this exercise was the Indian Air Force and the major, their, their T-90 tanks. They uh, jointly practiced maneuvers, offensive maneuvers, close to the border with Pakistan. Plus, they have also practiced special heli operations uh, behind the enemy lines. But 2009, uh, exercise Hind Shakti was uh, very important for course of doctrine. Uh, after the culmination of this exercise, their former army chief, he claimed that this exercise is another step towards the operationalization of course or dot line. Uh, why this exercise was important? Because of uh, the time frame, 72 hours was the time of this, uh, uh, this particular exercise, plus the offensive maneuvers which they practiced. Uh, along with that, first time ever, India introduced its uh, space assets, uh, Resat 2 satellite, which India got from Israel. Uh, they introduced in this particular exercise, 
this satellite, uh, although we discussed in front of the slide, this satellite is very important uh, for India. It, it comes in a, a category of spy satellite, and India can have 24 7 check on Pakistan, troop deployment, or strategic installations, everything. So, uh, along with that, India also introduced a uh, weapon locating radar system, uh, radars, weapon uh, battlefield surveillance radars. So all these components are, uh, you can say, very, very, very crucial uh, for the operationalization of Fort Sartre of China. Then, uh, in 2010, there were two major exercises uh, with the name of uh, Vayu Shakti and Yoda Shakti. Again, same components, Indian Air Force plus their tanks, uh, they practiced these, the, in these two years. Uh, oh, next. 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 So all these operations uh, India carried out in these two years. In 2011, 2011 was very significant. We have seen a revolution in Indian military. Uh, almost uh, in this particular exercise, which they carried out close to the border with Pakistan, uh, Bikaner and Suratgarh, as you can see uh, in, the, in the map, Bikaner and Suratgarh, IBG-5 and IBG-4, indicate the area Bikaner and Suratgarh, and India carried out this exercise in 2011. In this particular exercise, more than uh, 50,000 Indian troops participated. It was a major exercise uh, in which Indian attack helicopters along with special forces, uh, the T-90 latest tanks, SU-30 and uh, uh, aircraft were also there and they carried out joint operations. So as far as integration and synergies is concerned in, uh, uh, in the Indian Armed Forces, they practiced uh, in this particular exercise. So it was a great step towards the operationalization of uh, Cold Star Doctrine. Go next. 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 Yes. Uh, another exercise in the same year was uh, Pine Prahara. This exercise was uh, in the uh, Punjab sector, Chandigarh area. It was a four-day exercise in which Indian military practiced swift mobilization uh, uh, in their units and formations, and uh, plus Indian Air Force all, and Army utilized their UAVs, their, their surveillance and reconnaissance assets. So they practiced all these capabilities in this particular exercise. Uh, another important feature of this exercise was that India uh, brought almost 200 uh, latest tanks in this particular exercise and they practiced along with infantry combat vehicles. Uh, the almost 12,000 people, uh, the soldiers, they practiced uh, in the network centric and electronic warfare environment. As you can see, the Indian forces are practicing in the muddy area and crossing the river. So it was again a very, very uh, good exercise as far as India and very dangerous for Pakistan. Uh, in 2012, uh, 11 again, there was a third exercise which India carried out in the uh, Rajasthan sector. The previous one was in the Punjab sector and this was in the Rajasthan sector. This exercise uh, was also very, very uh, significant because of the area and uh, the level of troops which India brought in this exercise. Again, more than 50 to 60,000 troops were there, and 500 uh, main battle tanks, in which T-90 tanks and T-72 tanks, uh, they were uh, brought in, and they jointly maneuvered, uh, carried out offensive maneuvers close to the border with Pakistan in border areas. Along with that, India also um, utilized its uh, latest aircraft, uh, uh, SU-30s, along with attack helicopters, tanks, everything. So it was again a very significant exercise towards the operationalization of Cold Star Doctrine. Uh, the, in 2012, 2012 uh, again marked a very important year for Indian uh, Force. Uh, in this uh, year, in the, the first exercise, India practice was Ashwamed, uh, close to the border with Pakistan and Punjab sector, Jalandhar. The area was Jalandhar and almost 200, uh, again, 12,000 soldiers with tanks, later aircraft, air defense systems, special forces, they uh, carried out operations close to the border with Pakistan. Next. 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 Uh, another exercise uh, in the same year was exercise Shur Wheel. Uh, this exercise was uh, also very significant because uh, of the area. 
plus the level of groups uh, which India brought in. The area was Southwestern Command in Jodhpur, and uh, this 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 particular command is specially uh, was introduced. We can say uh, established in 2005 to support its uh, elements or its IDGs close to the border with Pakistan. So this this particular uh, exercise was also very very important in which India coordinated uh, operation by its inventory and uh, armor and artillery plus. Synergy and integration in Indian Armed Forces, uh, Indian Air Force and Army was also practiced in this exercise. The 2013 also marked important in which India uh, practiced uh, exercise uh, Iron Fist. This exercise was uh, also significant. Uh, it was in the Rajasthan sector and uh, India carried out day and night operations in which uh, almost 230 um, aircraft uh, were utilized and uh, they carried out operations in the network centric warfare environment and also they practice on the coordination. Next. 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 These were the components utilized in uh, this exercise. Next. 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 Okay. Uh, another small but significant exercise between um, Russia and India uh, focused on anti-terrorism operation was conducted in uh, close to the border with Pakistan. Uh, this exercise focused on the anti, uh, you can say, terrorist operations. Uh, not more than 250 soldiers from both sides participated in this exercise. So uh, this was not a major exercise but a significant one for India. Next. The last exercise uh, in 2014, in this year, was uh, exercise uh, Sarvada Vijay, always victorious. Uh, this exercise was uh, in the Skubhadgarh area in Rajasthan, close to the Rajasthan, in the Rajasthan sector, close to the border of Pakistan, in which 20,000 uh, 20, troops along with 200 uh, latest tanks, 500 infantry combat vehicles, and Mathura based strike corps was also part of this exercise. Now let me tell you that in most of these exercises, India utilized their strike corps and the offensive element uh, for these particular exercises. Army and Air Force was also deployed uh, and they deployed their remotely piloted aircrafts, UAVs and other assets. Next. Uh, here you can see the South Western Command which was um, established in 2005 and in this particular exercise in 2014, uh, India uh, utilized these, uh, you can say, uh, these elements from these, this particular area plus they utilized their pivot course uh, in this particular area. Next. Okay, uh, if we analyze now uh, all these exercises from last 10 years, last one decade, uh, we can come to a point that India has practiced all these components. Start from synergy and integration, quick robust operation, day and night operations, strike corps, bear drops, special forces operation, network centered warfare capabilities, everything which we have discussed already in the components part was practiced in last 10 years. So it was a significant uh, step you can say towards the operationalization of Uh, the last part of my presentation will focus on Indian military modernization. Uh, as we all know that according to CIPRI 2014, India is the largest importer of uh, weapon and equipment. And uh, along with that, uh, India's uh, proposed budget for 2014 is close to 39, 36 billion dollars, which is a 10% increase. Uh, and for this year, India is going to allocate around $14 billion for the purchase of latest weapon and equipment. The, uh, the backbone of the Indian military is T-90 tanks. Uh, these tanks India already possess 1,800 and in the next uh, 20 years India has plans to add a lot, almost 1,600 new uh, T-90 tanks from Russia and this is you can see the backbone of Indian uh, military. Uh, SU-30 MKI aircraft uh, is also very significant for the uh, air superiority and close air support to the uh, Indian land forces, ground forces. 
So uh, India uh, is also adding a uh, significant number of aircrafts and by 2015, uh, according to different uh, analysis, India would have at least 272 aircrafts in place, uh, which is good uh, offensive point for Pakistan. Okay. Uh, unique attack helicopters which can support your ground forces and Apache is one of the best uh, attack helicopters which uh, India is plan uh, planning to buy from uh, America with a deal of almost worth of 1.4 billion dollars. So it would give India a significant punch uh, and uh, it would uh, fill the gaps. Go next, 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 please. Uh, then you need uh, aircrafts for logistics and supply of your soldiers plus uh, in the war zone and uh, Chinook is one of the best, uh, you can see aircraft in place today, one of the best and India is also adding this particular aircraft. Next, next, next. This is Super Hercules which India has recently signed with the United States of America. Next, Global Master. It, it could be used to supply 150 full-packed soldiers plus uh, almost 70 ton of uh, uh, logistics in the war zone. So it is also a significant thing. Latest radars, uh, weapon locating radar, battle surveillance radars, radars, all these components India has already inducted from the last 10 years. Uh, another significant element is Harpy missile, which they got from Israel, which directly targets the radars. Uh, go to next. Previous slide, please. As uh, previous, previous. Yes, you, uh, in this slide you can see this is the Harpy missile which tracks the frequency of a radar and uh, hit that radar and destroy it. So just imagine uh, without eye in sky, uh, Pakistan would be in dangerous space. So India has also already inducted this process. Green Pine radar, we know this uh, for BMD, India is requiring this technology and it would also give India a confidence to go for some big event in this adventure against Pakistan. Next please. Next. Next. The SARPU satellite we have already discussed. Next. Satellite for Air Force. Specifically, they are adding satellite for the Air Force and Army. Designated satellites. So, India would have 24 7 check on Pakistan or new deployment or strategic installations, everything. Next. Next. Uh, let me conclude my presentation. Uh, sorry, uh, I apologize for the uh, time. Uh, General Kiani in 2010 said, we plan on adversaries' capabilities, not intentions. So he's right. Intention might be a monkey asha or something else. But in reality, what India is acquiring is dangerous for nuclear deterrence, dangerous for our security. And the purpose, sole purpose, that, as Dr. Chima said, the purpose of our nuclear weapon was the security. So Pakistan cannot can never undermine its security, Pakistan can never ignore its security. So ultimately Pakistan would rely on its nuclear assets for ultimate security. Thank you very much. Thank you, Basu Sattar. Okay, if General Yusuf can add something in.